You are about to witness a global movement. The medical system has failed us. Pharmaceuticals are designed to make us sick, weak, dependent. Not anymore. This is the Medicine Girl podcast with renowned healing expert and registered nurse, Robin Stevens. Every week, we shine the light on new ways to heal your body from the root, ignite your inner healer, and tap into your divine wisdom. Begin to live harmoniously with your mind, body, and spirit. You are stronger than you think, braver than you realize. Now is the time to wake up and start living healthier, wealthier, and laugh out loud happier. And here we go. Welcome to the Medicine Girl podcast. It is me, your host, Robin Stebbins. And today I am so excited to have Samantha Lotus with me all the way from Spain. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And Samantha, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and kind of ex exploring with our audience just what you feel is important about you and, and what you want people to know. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. As you can hear, I do not have a Spanish accent. I'm Canadian and just moved to Spain. And yeah, a little bit about me. I like to call myself a lifestyle alchemist. Um, my background is in psychology, naturopathy, sociology, and then really diving into the more metaphysical and the esoteric philosophies and, and really the Eastern medicine. And a little bit about my journey was that I grew up very much standard North American, you know, diet, life, mentality, stress, um, trauma, just, just kind of like what most people go through. And I went through major health challenges. I um, followed in the footsteps of my, my mother and father going through a lot of health challenges. My body continued to break down system by system, started when I was about 18 I started to have really irregular cycles. My hormones were all over the place. I started to lose my hair in clumps. I lost my menstrual cycle, which ended up being for seven years. Started to have uh, panic attacks, digestive issues. And it got so severe that I actually developed this cancerous blood situation, which I don't like to name the name. I don't like to put a name to it, but it was a cancerous blood situation and I nearly lost my life. And having that happen to me was the, was the breakdown to have the breakthrough, to have the awakening, to see that everything about my life was toxifying me, burdening me and causing me to literally die. <laughs> and so it, that was a huge awakening for me. And it caused me to, to really shift my trajectory and dive fully into naturopathic and holistic healing. Thank you so much for sharing. And I, um, so much to unpack with that. But what I really like you saying, and what I have noticed in the 30 years I've been in healthcare, is that you don't give energy to a disease or a label, um, especially in the healthcare field, because then yeah. we start to become that label. Um, and then as, as we can see what's happening right now, when I'm in fear, my prefrontal cortex shuts down. Mm -hmm. So then I look to an authority figure to tell me what to do. And um, I think I think we can see pretty clearly, like especially right now, that they do not have our best interest at heart. Um, mm -hmm. It's business. And so, um, can you kind of ex explain, like, how you know, from that moment you d just saw your body breaking down to the kind of the the critical point? What what were you thinking inside, and how did you start that quest of? taking back ownership, sovereignty over your body. Yeah. Ever since I was 17, I started to see doctors and therapists and, and I would be rushed to the emergency room over and over. And, and all my doctor said was, oh, well, just go on an IV. Oh, take this, this Synthroid drug for your thyroid. Oh, take birth control pill for this. Oh, let's get you on anti-anxiety meds. Let's get you on antidepressants. Let's cut out your thyroid. Let's, let's just blast you with chemotherapy. Let's just, well, it's all in your head or, you, you know, and, and I really, I really realized like, wow, they, these people cannot help me. They don't have any tools or solutions yeah. And I never, I didn't say yes to any of it. I never went on medications. I never got the surgeries and I never did the chemo. And each time- well, let, me, doctor, let me just interrupt. How did you know not to do that? Because most people mm -hmm. look at the doctors as God. 
So what yeah. was what was inside of you, especially at that young age, that was like, no, you're not cutting my body apart. Yeah, I, well, two things. The first thing was something inside of me. I was always smart. Okay, I was always smart and always intuitive. And something inside of me just thought, well, wait, like that doesn't make sense. I'm going to be on a on a thyroid medication for the rest of my life. Like this is something I'm going to take. There's there's nothing else I can do. And and then they're like, no, there's nothing else. And so, but something inside of me just said bullshit. Like that, that can't be true. That can't be true. And the second part of it was I watched my mom go through uh, cancer treatments, go through chemo, uh, have her thyroid cut out and just never get better, just be sick forever. And I thought, and I remember when the, when the oncologist pressured her to get chemo the next month, like you have to, or your blood's going to be on my hands. And I can't have that. The, the doctor said that. And I remember thinking that this is sick. Something inside of me just said, this is completely wrong. And so I decided before I was going to do anything, I was going to dive into research and I just started Googling alternatives to this medication. Like, why am I losing my hair? Why is my thyroid like natural alternative? And I just started to research and I unpacked a whole world that was hidden from me. I was like, wait, my, my diet. Oh my God. You mean that me drinking four days a week and eating all of the junk food and not eating vegetables that could be contributing oh, you mean that my trauma from my abortion, that could be considering like, oh, all of this stuff, my stress, that could be contributing. Wow. Why didn't my doctor tell me that? That's, uh, and that's what I've been saying for 30 years. It's like, when you hand somebody a pill or a prescription, you say, you're going to need to take this for your life. I better be darn well sure. What's your spiritual practices? Who are you hanging out with? What are you putting in your body? What are you eating, drinking? Um, all of those things. They never ask that. So, you know, that should give us clue number one. Yeah. Um, and before, when I first started um, helping patients with health and wellness and all of that, like I could find stuff on the internet. I could find stuff about cholesterol medications because that's kind of where, you know, I'm on a soapbox about that and the harmful effects of those drugs without any benefit, mm -hmm. but that's all gone. It's all sanitized. Now, for the most part, you have to use like web browsers like Brave and and, and all of that. So we're, yeah. we're facing an uphill battle, but I think the power and what you're talking about is you take back ownership of your body and you, and then you can use intuition. Like something doesn't sound right about this. And once you see it, yeah. and once you see like, oh, it's what I'm putting into my body that's causing these toxins that to replicate, like, I, can't, I think it kind of speaks to terrain theory of disease versus germ theory. Are you familiar kind of with that difference? Yes, absolutely. Speak to that? Yeah. What I'm going to say, something that you've really identified that's really important is we are, we are raised in condition to just accept information, you know, like it, whether it's from the church, whether it's from our doctors, whether it's from our teachers, whether it's from the government, the, oh, especially the commercials, especially you just take yeah. it and, and, and that's truth. And for me, I was always, my archetype is the rebel archetype. And I, I realized when I realized that Santa Claus wasn't real, that people lied to me. And once I realized that Santa Claus wasn't real and people were lying to me, it really allowed me to question everything. And I think that that's one of the most important things that we can really uh, do, especially in this time, is when somebody's presenting something to you, question it, right? Yes. Question it. And, question it and, and then say, also question the answer, you know? Exactly. Question Not, it, question the answer. And check. Yes. And, yeah. yeah and, and so to circle back to that first question that you asked, like, how did I know? My, I had this like kind of near death experience, I guess you could say, and I, I got to like, the only way I could explain this, and I didn't believe in this until it happened to me, was that I like met God or I met my higher self. It was just, I heard my own voice speaking to me in this like energy type of way, just saying like, Sam, everything that you're doing, all the things you're thinking, the things you're eating, the, all of it, like you're killing yourself and your self-hatred, your sub, subconsciously, mm -hmm. you want to die because you hate your life. And you're being presented with the opportunity. Do you want to die or do you want to live? And I was, I panicked and I said, I want to live. And it's like, okay, my higher self was like, real talk, Sam, you need to change every single facet of your life. And but that's, that's really true, like that. We look at it and it's very, it's, 
once you see it, it's, it's so obvious, but like that self-hatred and I had that down pat for, you know, the majority of my life, honestly, it wasn't until 10 years ago, but I also had autoimmune disease, self-attacking self, self-hatred, yeah. you're attacking yourself. So that all of that energy thoughts are energy. You can measure them outside of your body scientifically. Yes. Um, so again, it's like, cueing into all of those really sometimes subtle aspects of yourself that are contributing to this. And, and that's the ownership, you know, it's that's it. the fear-based model of here, you have this diagnosis, oh my God, get sympathy and um, start feeding into now we've created an entity out of a word. Yes. And that's the thing, you know, with, with talking about the terrain, we can talk about cancer, we can talk about coronavirus, like, because that's very relevant, we can talk about anything. But, you know, in traditional, or like in allopathic medicine, right now, we focus on the toxin, we focus on the, the, the organ that isn't working, we focus on the cancer, we focus on the corona. But what about the environment? What about the terrain? What about the holistic body? You know, uh, the, a virus cannot overtake a body that is that is, has its antivirus system up and running. It's not going to happen. Cancer cannot develop in a body that is energetically, mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy, right? And so instead of looking and putting the focus on the problem and the fear and the victimhood and that story, and we need to blast it, we need to blast kill the it. whole garden, Biden. kill it. We need to kill it because there's a weed. Well, no, if you have a weed in your garden, you go in and you tenderly pluck out the weed and then you, you attend to the soil so that new flowers and, and growth can happen. And, and that's, that's what the holistic model is, where it's mind, body, spirit. It's what you're putting in. It's what's coming out and not just focusing on this, this germ or this cancer or this organ system that's not working so singular, so, so micro-focused because one organ doesn't exist on its own. It's a part of a whole entire body ecosystem. It, and that, I think that is what we're all missing right now because it's not just, especially this allopathic medical system where you, you're trying to car compartmentalize the human being and we don't stop at this body either. So we go on infinitely with our thoughts, with our heart, with our, our energy, right? Yes. So when we, when we get that microscope out and we're like one certain thing, your red blood cells, we're going to focus on that. We're going to tell you a story mm -hmm. about it and make you afraid of that. And then we're it's going to so give scary. you poisons to deal with your poison. You know, like it just doesn't make any logic sense. So when, when I'm working with patients, what I really like to talk about is that, you know, yes. where are you polluting yourself internally? Where are you polluting yourself externally? What does your house look like? What is your garden? What are the, you know, foliage around your house? It, it's all an extension of that energy. So what do yes. you have um, any wisdom to impart to people that are kind of stuck in that? There's a lot of people I work with have just stuck in that. This is my diagnosis. I'm mm. fighting this disease and yeah. this, that's it. There's nothing yeah. else I can do. Right there, like the, the problem right there is, this is my cancer, I have cancer, I am a cancer patient, I identify as being sick. This is now part of my identity. And your words are your wand and your words become your reality. So you speak, so you are. And so the first thing is people need to be aware that you are your own healer. Your doctor is not going to save That's you. The it. pill is not going to save you. The medication is not going to save you. The, the cutting out an organ, definitely not going to save you. You have every single thing that you need inside of you right now to heal. That's the first thing. And you need to know that healing is possible. If you don't believe it, go read the millions of testimonials that are out there about people that Literally. have healed themselves. Millions, Literally millions. And you that's the find. only way that's, that is the only way it's like, you have decided to ignite your inner healer. That's yes. it. That's Rule it. number so one. Th th exactly it. Mindset and attitude f first and foremost, the most important thing. And then the second thing would be, I would say is to desire and drive every program. I start with mindset, and attitude, desire, and drive. You need to want to heal. And most people don't want to heal because they hate their lives. Well, mm -hmm. they don't want to go back to that job because they hate it. They don't want to be in that relationship because they hate it. They don't want to be in their body because they hate themselves. And that is 
the anger, guilt, shame, blame, self-hatred, resentment, all of those lower density vibrations, that is what fuels and keeps people in this, this sickness with the identity of I am sick. And so the healing really happens by taking account of all the different things in your life that are making you sick. You know, like Robin was saying, like the toxins, the things that are toxifying you and then going through and alchemizing them. If they need to be taken out of your life, like terrible friendships that are sucking your soul, cut them out. If that means leaving your job, leave it. If it means that you need to forgive yourself for something you've done in the past, forgive yourself. It's, you know, you need to go through and remove all of the things that are literally making you sick and then focus on adding in the things that would make you feel good like like mm -hmm. hobbies like yoga like dance like new friends like passion coming into coming into the soul tethering to the body what are you here for what is your that's sacred it. calling and your mission and what lights you up because that's you know I, I like to call it source consciousness god energy pure life force whatever you want to call it but that's where it can flow through you and that is the true medicine that is ignited from within and sourced from source and that will fuel you but that's okay so let's let's just talk briefly about let's say okay it's it's easy for me to to no longer identify with you know i used to be hypothyroid and they give me thyroid medicine that's gonna have to be on the rest of my life and i just stopped taking it because i i decided like that's not who i am yeah and because I'm in a different state, I've done a lot of work, it was easy to shift that energetic level. But for yeah. those that are, okay, I'm no longer identifying with that illness, but what does self-forgiveness mean? What is like, yeah, I can cut toxic people out, but how do I know if they're toxic? How did I know, you know, they're not in their bodies. They're in that egoic, this is the third dimension and what I see is what I get. What's your, what's your take on, on getting yeah. under that to help kind of shift? Unfortunately, I don't feel that everyone is meant to heal holistically. I feel like some people are so stuck and if they're not willing to go natural, then, then that's not part of their journey. And so I've actually, my practice have stopped trying to convince people. I just share the message that it's possible and anyone that is drawn to that light will come to that light. But people that don't want to believe it, well then take the path that you want to take, but does it work for you? And most people, when they get the, the medication, they do the chemo, the cancer comes back or they don't feel good. They still feel like shit. And then they start to realize, Ooh, maybe there's another way. So I would say, you know, for somebody who's maybe on the fence, I would say just explore it, you know, explore working with, and I always recommend work with a practitioner that can hold space for you and that can really understand you and support you uh, through this journey. Yeah, because, because it really is what you believe in, right? If you don't believe you can heal you, well, you won't. And if you don't believe natural medicines work, then, then they probably won't for you. And so you know, yeah. And that, and that's not, we're not saying, mind. yeah, we're not saying like, that's the placebo yeah. effect. And a lot of the people, um, that watch this show are awakening. They just don't know where to start. They're on literally three pages yeah. of prescription medications and they've had these toxic right. lifestyles most of their life. So it's like, is it too late for me? Absolutely. It's not too late. It's just what you're talking about. And I think this has been my, the premise for any patient I work with is that you have to clean the fish tank, you know, and we're talking like terrain theory, you cannot yes. have a dirty fish tank and expect to thrive as, as this little goldfish swimming around. So you've got to have this clean environment. Otherwise, yeah, you can, you know, use these external modalities to heal you, but it's just a band aid. You haven't fixed the system. It's going to keep repeating itself. Totally. So yeah. And so Sometimes the mental and emotional work is a little challenging. And what I like to get people to do is start with the simple things like the physical, like you're saying, you know, how about we, we focus on eating some healthy whole foods? How about we focus on moving the body a little bit? How about we focus on sweating and spending time with loved ones? And then once we have a solid foundation, you know, I, I do also recommend doing gentle detoxification programs. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely an advocate to that, to cleanse the bowels, to cleanse the liver, to cleanse the kidneys, not some of these like harsh, toxic cleanses online, but uh, with whole foods, natural supplements, essential oils. 
and, and nature. And so, yeah, cleaning out the body, doing a reset. And then from there, when the physical is, you know, working a little better, I like to use affirmations and tapping and visualization and using some mindset tools. And then for the emotional, where I feel like 95% of my, my clients that I work with, if they have cancer or they have something like a chronic illness, there is a huge emotional component. And so that's where we go through, you know, week by week and start to heal these things by releasing them often through somatic exercises or through for forgiveness prayers or cord cutting or, you know, whatever other modality comes up, but it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, definitely a process. Yeah. And I think definitely, I think every illness stems from an emotional root and, and like identifying with an illness people can identify with their trauma and become kind of what I call wound fondlers. And you, you just don't want to mm. let go of that story because you've, you're so identified with it. So that's another yes. piece to it is to, to be able to separate out like, no, this is what happened to me. I can now transmute that energy into something, you know, that's, that awakens my spirit, but also recognize that unless I deal with those emotions and that emotional component, the illness, the diseased state, the, the place where I'm out of harmony will continue. So again, mm -hmm. that's, the, I think a lot of people that I've worked with over the years get stuck in that piece with yeah, absolutely. identifying with their trauma, not being able to let go. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much of there's there's the neuroscience of it. There's the body keeps the score, right? The, the body holds on to trauma. The yeah. brain creates these pathways. Imagine like a ski hill. And if you keep skiing the same path over and over, it becomes deeper and deeper and deeper. And so, you know, thoughts and, and feelings, they are neurons fire and wire together. And so the more we wake up in these same stories and doing the same things, we're going to get the same results. And, and then that, that building an identity around being sick, it's like, you, you know, going through healing is, is, is dying. That part of your identity will have to die. And the ego and doesn't does want to let like go. It. And it does feel like that. And a lot of people yeah. say, well, like, Sam, who would I be without my eating disorder? Or who would I be if I didn't have this fibromyalgia? What would I even do if I didn't spend all my days researching how to fix yeah. it? And if I didn't, you know, and so it's, it's really about, yeah, seeing that the, the brain goes through these traumas and then the fight or flight response and the brain holds on to it and it recreates this and re goes through it. And so doing things like, again, that mindset work and creating a new vision for yourself. Like, oh, well, yeah. you know, my body knows how to heal itself. And I am a person that values myself and that's learning to love myself and cherish myself. And that's really powerful because the, the study of epigenetics shows that the mind literally recreates the body through thought and the body that every single cell in your body is sentient and it's connected to your thoughts. It's connected to your brain and the cells are always changing. Even your DNA, we have two, we have two variations of DNA. We have the, the genotype, which is what we're just given the blueprint, but then the phenotype is the expression of the DNA and G and Dean's genes can be turned off or turned on. Right. And so you literally are recreating your body all of the time. And people need to yeah. know this to be empowered yeah. with the information to know that they can heal and change. That that's it. Um, very, very important. It's, I think it's easy to get it complicated. So for, for everyone listening, the simplest common denominator right now is self-love. And when I, when I, completely engage in unconditional self-love, it's very difficult and it becomes even more difficult to toxify myself, toxify myself with friends, with family members, with fast food. Um, your body will eventually reject it. You like, you won't even be able to eat it. Um, yeah. And then as we kind of, as we progress through that, that self-love, you get to see the root, like the roots of these illness or these places where you've gotten out of harmony with your being. So yeah. as, as you're progressing, then, then things start to line up. I, I don't know if you've noticed that in your Absolutely. journey. But. Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, I feel like 
when I really got to the root and everyone has a root for me, it was my mom got pregnant when she was 20. My, it was not okay with the family. And my dad didn't want to be a dad at 21 years old. And so my blueprint right in the uterus in utero was I I shouldn't be alive. I am a burden. I am, I am causing a problem. You know, I'm unwanted. And then that perpetuated when my mom didn't show up for me in the way that I needed her. And my stepdad hated me because he saw my father when he looked at me. And, and so I grew up with this template and the story of my existence causes people problems. It, it causes pain. I shouldn't be here. I I shouldn't exist. And when you grow up with this subtle program underlying your life, well, you make a lot of different decisions based on that poor decisions and you, you abuse yourself in certain ways, potentially, and you abandon yourself in certain ways and you attract people that will abandon you and abuse you. And so this perpetuates. And when I really did the work to go in, I saw, oh, my cancer was, was me trying to, me trying to rectify the fact that my existence ruined my parents' life. That was your belief. System yes, coming in. That was my belief. And that and was the subconscious root. too, because, you know, it's so, and that I have a very similar story, but um, when it's that young infancy coming into the world with those hormones, everything that your mom was experiencing in utero goes a chemical signature into your body, but yes. we don't have this like intellect around it as an adult to say, oh, that that's not my story. It is you, it becomes you. So to be able to find that root creates that, what I call facing your dragon, kind of a Joseph Campbell hero. Mm. Yeah. And the, the dragon isn't, you know, the, you just have to get out a sword and chop it up. It's like, it's the most, it's the thing that, if, that you're most afraid of. And instead of slicing up the dragon, you become teammates until you can love that dragon. And then it goes and it's nothing to be afraid of. That's your root. That's your transcendence from that root. The other th- I agree. Th- you got to hug that dragon. And yeah. Th- you got to love that dragon because that dragon is you. It, you know, every, all of this is you. All of this stuff is being mirrored back to you. And um, I think two, two things. I want to get back to epigenetics and your methyl markers on your DNA strand and how we can light those up. Um, but in, in the kind of that hero's journey and, and the path to self-love and that, that subconsciousness, when you're looking at your, your triggers in your life, you're looking for teeth to fit that wound. So if it's an abusive relationship, you're not picking it just because you're trying to repeat history. You're trying to heal that wound. So look around you, where are you getting triggered? That's a great place to, to shine the light. Um, and then kind of circling back to what you're talking about with epigenetics. They're, they're saying now, you know, 90, 95% is us, how we express those genes. 5% maybe is like, what color my hair is, what color my eyes are. Um, I think it's 100%. What I have noticed in, in my life, and, and I was born with black hair and, and black eyes, and I was in a blonde hair, blue eyed family and my hair fell out at a year and came in blonde. Coincidence, who knows? Uh-huh. But um, <laughs> I, that started me on that trek. Um, my, I came in with trauma and abandonment and betrayal. I was adopted and the backstory is not pretty. And so I carry that with me, always tuned my radar to expect betrayal, to expect Um, signs and symbols from the universe saying, yeah, you're right. You shouldn't be here. So you got to hide that. And inside now I have this need for love, but if I don't recognize that most of it's subconscious, now I'm going to be this hungry ghost seeking love in all these external ways. That's never going to fulfill me because it's those external, those external sources. So marrying that kind of in with the, with the epigenetics and our programming and our ancestral programming, how do you guide either yourself or the clients that you work with to discovering these infinite numbers of, you know, faucets to us that have programmed us? Like, where do you find these roots to 
shine the light on and release. Yeah, what I what I find with a lot of people that I work with, normally there's some kind of body thing that's associated or an anxiety thing, but that also shows up in the body. And normally either it's through questionnaires, you know, I'll really ask them a lot of questions and discover, or sometimes it's through bringing people through guided meditations and doing the inner child work. So what it actually looks like is I'll have my, my client lay down, you know, and I'll guide them through meditation to come into their body. And then we identify where there's some pain or any kind of sensation in the body. Now, a lot of the time it's in the throat, it's in the genitals, it's in the body, in the womb, maybe like in the head. And when we go into it in this safe space, I ask what color, what shape, if there's a story there, if it needs to tell anything. And we, we dive into that. And then often I'll ask, well, when was the first time you remember that coming? When they, they, the first time you remember feeling that, boom, they're back, they're three years old, their parents are fighting, the, you know, their mom walks over and smacks them across the face. And, and they're right back in that moment. And what we do is the, the inner child work, we'll go back to that time and we can alchemize it and transmute it and whatnot. But often it, you know, that's something that they maybe hadn't even thought of in 20 years, but there are these moments in, in childhood often or in teenagehood and in your younger years that cause these, these tethers or these um, tethers to trauma or these, you know, fractures that need to be healed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like you said, it's ancestral, you know, sometimes it's your great grandmother was raped. And that trauma wound was passed down through the lineage and you live with this anxiety or sometimes in a past life, you were a witch. And I had a vision of that. I was a witch. I was hung and burned alive for speaking my truth. Yeah, no. And I, that's, I've had that same one and it was, I was hung and I can't have, I can never have anything like close around my neck, but I just, it came to me. And so for my patients, the ones that I work with and everyone else, like it's easy to see this as, as kind of like spiritual voodoo lunacy, but it's not, it's not, right. If you know that like super, super allopathic way of like the body is just this like organ plus organ, then you're going to think it's crazy. Like if she's talking about past lives and witches, yeah, I get it. It's totally crazy. If you're taking that perspective, however, when millions and millions and millions of people are having these experiences and talking about these things and sharing these things. And I'm a very logical person. And when I nearly died and like met my higher self, that that messed with me, you know, and that really, so I think, you know, the world is woo woo. We, it is a spiritual matrix that we're experiencing and, and it's, it's very relevant. Our soul, I mean, you know, we have a soul story and we have ancestral stories and we have past lives as we've reincarnated and those things affect our current situations, whether we like it or we're aware of it or not. And whether we believe in it or not, it is, it is affecting us. And absolutely, you know, I would throw out just, you know, a couple studies, but one they did on um, grand, great grandchildren and grandchildren from from people that had been in concentration camps in Auschwitz. And these great grandchildren would have nightmares of these concentration camps, never having known that grandparent was in the concentration camp. So it is passed through, it is in your DNA and it has to be seen. I think that is the the crux of everything. Like as humans, we wanna be seen authentically for who we are, not necessarily facade, because then we've caught a hungry ghost. Like, hey, Samantha, I really want you to see me, but I'm never going to show you me. But I'm craving that. So it's like this, this, this cycle that is never seen. So all of these things that we're talking about, it's just shining the light on them. It's not as scary as it seems. It's like that chasm that you have to jump isn't as, isn't as terrifying as it looks initially, but to shine the light on that so that it can be released. Is that kind of in alignment with what yeah, yeah, That's absolutely. Cool. And I, I know quite a few people, I, you know, I wasn't raised in a very hippie or woo woo community at all. I'm, I'm from Eastern Canada. It's not very common there. Like it is, you know, in California or other more conscious places of the world. And so for some of my friends that are, that are awakening or going through this process that were so closed off to it before, or anyone that's listening, that's like, okay, this is crazy. You know, what if you were to explore and just be curious? What if you were 
to like, just ask, well, why is it that I have this scar around my neck that I have no explanation? Or why is it that I keep having these dreams of this girl that lives in the back of my house? Like why, you know, and, and yeah, because once we, once we can shine light into these, into these places, into these spaces that, that need it, because it's hidden in darkness or shadow, it just illuminates from the inside out. And there's this clarity and healing that comes from just being aware of some of these more subtle things that are going on with you. That's it. And and this is, again, boiling it all down, that self-love, maintaining that sovereignty over your body. So you're, you're starting to listen. You're starting to listen more with intuition. And the intuition isn't just from this limited body. Like I get to hook up to the mainframe of this multiverse and, and kind of, I can download all of that information immediately so that I know what resonates for my body, what, what helps me, I I can use that my body compass to see what supplements are good. Again, like if, if, if you take nothing else from this, this conversation, it's that you're, you're in control. And when you start that, that pathway to illuminating who you are in truth, everything else will fall into place. I think that's what we're, we're looking at. So I know you don't have a lot of time. So to kind of wrap things up, what do you do on the daily? Like what keeps your vibration high and keeps you in health and that harmonious balance of wellness? Mm. It is a daily practice for me and I am not perfect at it. And when I don't do it daily and I let myself go for a few days or weeks, I, I don't, I slip right back into feeling awful. And so for me, I know that I am a very sensitive person. My body does not like to be imbalanced. It does not like to do the things that are not healthy for me. And so for me, my body has asked me to be extremely intentional with my daily practice. And so that means for me that I don't work until 12. I don't work (laughs) until noon. I wake up and I have four to five hours to like dance around, to do yoga, to make my tea tea to journal to, to you know do my breath work outside at the porch looking at the ocean I do whatever I want I make breakfast I like sing and dance and, and I really bring a lot of joy into my morning and then I, I really don't over overdo it I don't push myself too hard I work for a few hours I take a break I go for a walk I go to the gym I make lunch and then again you know in the afternoons I'll work for a few hours and and like really I'm just, I'm just very aware of checking in with my body. Am I being overstimulated? Am I overwhelmed right now? Do I need a break? Do I need to stretch? And then, you know, I do eat really good food. Um, I cook my own food with love. I bless it. I chew. Mm. I'm super grateful. I take high quality essential oils. I use supplements that are made for my body and my constitution. Um, All my products are natural, handmade or organic. And then I have a really good bedtime routine. Like sleep is so important. I always sleep at least eight and a half hours. And like that, there's nothing that will come between me and my sleep. And I just prioritize my health. Like that's really, I've committed to my self-love, my self-care and my practice. That That's beautiful. I love that. That, that, is, that is self-love you know, having these practices. And, and again, like it's so important. We are human beings having this experience. So part of that is, is allowing yourself to be human and, and noticing like being really sensitive to your environment. I think that's been so like pushed out of our, our psyche, because when you're sensitive to your energy, you know, immediately what works for you, what doesn't, and you become a really poor consumer. Like you're not engaged in this whole black Friday business, you're in Mm -hmm. your truth, you know, you're in your element. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to work until noon. And you just own that. That is the kindest, most loving thing you can do for yourself. And I think, you know, looking at you, it certainly is paying off, right? You're just absolutely stunning. And you have energy that's just like oozing out of the, out of the computer. So Yeah. And, you know, for some people listening, well, like, oh, well, that sounds nice. Not working till 12 and like going to lunch. And yeah, I built my life that way because 
I used to have jobs and I used to be, you know, a naturopathic in a clinic and I, used, I was a flight attendant for a while. I did modeling for a while. I've worked sales jobs and managing jobs and I hated it. I hate having a schedule. I hate being at work at a certain time. I hate air conditioning more than anything. Like right? I hate it. I <laughs> hate, I hate bright lights. I hate yes. the smells of the toxic, like I hate cologne. I hate all of those things. I hate people telling me what the to do. Fluorescent lights. That's and, another, like that buzzing of the that fluorescent is, the, lights. The yeah. buzzing and dri tra driving to having yeah. to go through traffic to drive, to get to a workplace. There's yeah. no way in <laughs> hell. And so yeah, when I went through my- that. Yeah, when I went through my health breakdown, I was like, okay, no, I need to architect my life intentionally so that I can work from the beach, so that I can work from home. And it it didn't just come to me. I built this because I chose this, because I prioritized my health and I prioritize what's true for me. And so whatever you're doing for some other boss, you can do for yourself. And if you don't like what you're doing and you feel called to do something else, well, hire a business coach or take an entrepreneurship class and do it because now yeah. is the time for you to prioritize what really is true for you. That's it. And there's no turning back and there's no time to dilly dally. Like right now it's go time. If you are waiting for a sign, this is it. Like quit that job. If you hate it, do those things that, you know, you're that. Is, is in alignment with your health and, and boost your energy as, as high as you can. So Samantha, where can people find you if they want to do yeah. coaching or they just want to check out your website? Yeah. For anyone who feels called, I love, I love helping people transform their life. I, I say, you know, I'm just here to help people build badass lives and businesses. And so if that resonates with you, uh, you can reach out to me on social at Samantha underscore Lotus or my website, samanthalotus.com. Perfect. And I'll have all those links in the, in the show notes too. So people can just one click and they're there. So any last words for us, like any last inspiration to, to get us going on this amazing quest of our going inward to, to know ourselves more deeply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like for anyone listening, you deserve to be happy and you deserve to be healthy and you deserve to be free of pain and anxiety and suffering. And no one is going to do that for you. And that's the beauty because you get to do it for yourself. And it really takes just believing in it and choosing it and surrounding yourself with people who love you and who support you in that. And you can absolutely overcome and shift and change and transmute anything like that is not just possible, but probable. And you can definitely do that. So we are both believing in you and cheering you on. Yes, a hundred percent. And that energy is, is magnetic and it does act, it can absolutely heal. So we're sending it. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Samantha Lotus, for giving me an hour of your time. And I so appreciate you doing this on the planet. It's, it's amazing to see you light things up. Mm, Robin, I want to really acknowledge you for everything that you are and everything that you're creating this message that you're sharing the platform that you're creating for for to really empower people and for your bravery as well you know you you're a nurse who's in a, a system and who's breaking out of 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 some of these confines and and really sharing your message and that that takes a lot of courage and power and strength and grace and wisdom and i really appreciate you well thank you thank you and i really i that just hit me right in the heart because that is what I'm doing. That is why I'm here on this planet, not to fight anything, but to show you like, look how beautiful you are. Look how powerful we are. So thank you so much for, for seeing that. I deeply, deeply value and I'm grateful for you. Mm, same. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you, Samantha.